Hello, I'm going to talk about resonant tuning diode in my talk today, including its principles and applications. I will talk about its history and also include its near future improvements. In 1951, David Bohm solved the tunneling through a double barrier area by uh, by using the WKB approximation, he pointed out that the resonances in the transmission coefficient will occur at a certain incident electron energies. Tunneling is a quantum process in which a particle penetrates into and transmits through a barrier area where its potential energy exceeds its initial energy. While the resonant tunneling is distinguished from the simple tunneling process by the presence of the states of the tunneling particle, which is classical forbidden, the most typical situation is the double barrier uh, resonant tunneling. In this case, two thin finite potential barriers collide a quantum well. Incident particles to the structure have almost unity tunneling probabilities at energies corresponding to the causes states from the quantum well. That is not from intuition because there is transmission coefficients for one barrier, but for the two layers of barriers, it turns out to be totally transparent. Actually, over our previous assignments, we have already calculated the transmission rate based on the energy of injected carriers. As expected in figure B, the transmission will exhibit multi-peaks corresponding to different discrete energy levels inside the quantum wells. The resonant tuning diode can also be made of different materials and different structures. Actually, after the concepts of the resonant turning was put forward, it is not until the early 1970s, Tsu and Isaki computed the two terminal current voltage characteristic of a finite, finite superlattice super and predicted that resonances could be observed not only in the transmission coefficient, but also in the current voltage characteristic. Isaki shared the Nobel Prize in uh, physics in 1973, and the resonant turning diode is also named after Isaki as Isaki diode. As Isaki's prediction of the resonant turning diode, we can use white voltage buyers to tune the barrier shapes and consequently tune the resonant transmission and the characteristic uh, current voltage curve. There are three regions of uh, IV operation regimes based on his uh, prediction. When the, so at first, when the voltage bias is zero, there will be no turning current occurring. The first region will be the, would be the positive resistance region. For the low bias, as the bias increases, the first confined state between the potential barriers is getting closer to the source Fermi level, so the current it carries it carries increases. It shows a small turning current increasing until it reaches the maximum turning current. The second region is the negative resistance region, which is the most important region for the IV operations in resonant turning diode devices. As the bias increases further, the first confined state becomes lower in energy and gradually goes into the uh, energy range of the band gap. So the current it carries decreases. At this time, the second confined state is still too high above in energy to con conduct any significant current. So the second, so so it will undergo the tunneling cu current starts decreasing here. So the the third part, the third region is the second positive resistance region, where it is similar to the first region. As the second confined state becomes closer and closer to source Fermi level, uh, it carries more current, causing the total current to increase again, which falls into the region with zero turning current and maximum forward current. So based on those kind of assumptions, one of the pronounced features of resonant turning diode is its negative differential resistance. In this paper in 1983, the resonant turning 
through a single quantum wave of gallium arsenide has been observed from the proven data of negative differential resistance. The structure is alternating gallium arsenide and gallium aluminum arsenide layers, where the gallium arsenide contacts and the quantum wells are heavily doped and the gallium aluminum arsenide layers are served as two thin layers of barriers. From the differential resistance curve, it exhibits a negative resistance in room temperature and become quite pronounced in IV curves at low temperature. The high frequency results show the device can be operated at 2.5 terahertz and prove the high speed charge transport. This exactly paved the way for constructing practical nonlinear devices using quantum wells. Actually, since these early high performances results have been proved in early 1980s, the resonant turning dials are typically quickly rely, realized in 3-5 group compound material systems, such as indium gallium arsenide and alumina arsenide heterojunctions. All of them exhibit very similar good negative differential resistance region. There is another important feature of the resonant turning diode is its terahertz operation frequency. Take a double barrier structure as an example. Carriers such as electrons and holes can only have discrete energy values inside the quantum well when a voltage is placed across a resonant turning diode. Well, the energy of the injected carriers equals to the energy level of electrons confined in the quantum well, a terahertz wave will be emitted. As the voltage is increased, the terahertz wave dies out because the energy value in the quantum well is outside the emitter side uh, energy. The example device is a uh, is a sub terahertz oscillating gallium indium arsenide and alumina arsenide resonant turning diode integrated with the slot antenna. The, fundament, the fundamental oscillation frequency standing at the 342 GHz at room temperature, while the third harmonic frequency exhibits at 1 terahertz and the oscillation frequency can be tuned by slightly changing the bias voltage. All this successful experimental observation of near uh, of neg negative differential resistance and uh, high frequency operations should attribute to the advances in molecular beam epitaxy techniques and the fabrication methods in early 1980s. So here I'm going to show a complete resonant turning diode process flow. So here it shows a vertical TEM micrograph illustrating the quality of the active region composed from a gallium arsenide quantum well and two alumina arsenide barriers. It shows a very good control of the thickness and very sharp interfaces due to the MBE grown samples. The active region is cladded by spacer, low doped layers, and the contact layers. For the device fabrication for electrical characterization, first, methods are defined to obtain the active area of the device. The area should be on the order of tens of micrometers. Next, contacts are processed by lift-off technique using a specific metallization and then to be annealed in a rapid thermal process to obtain the ohmic behavior. Finally, the contacts are isolated with silicon dioxide and measurements paths are defined using again the lift-off techniques, this time with gold metallization. There is another important consideration of thinking of our resonant turning diode devices is that we need to think of about whether it is compatible with silicon CMOS technology since this is a very promising technology field in the circuit in the circuits. Such devices with actually such devices with three five group com components have not entered mainstream applications yet because the processing of three five group materials is incompatible with silicon CMOS technology, which is at low temperature and the cost is very high. So as a substitution, 
uh, silicon silicon germanium material system emerges as a potential candidate. The basic structure of silicon silicon germanium resonant interband ternary diode is like this. The intrinsic tunneling bar barriers, the doped injectors, and the offset of the doping plan from the heterojunction interfaces are all needed for these example devices. The integration of silicon silicon germanium resonant inter interbound. Uh, interbound turning diodes with silicon CMOS shows a three terminal negative differential resistance with adjustable peak to valley uh, current ratio, and the low current density makes it potential for low power memory applications. So in conclusion, the resonant turning diode exhibits very good performances like negative differential resistance, which can provide electrical gain for optoelectronic devices, and it can also be opera operated at very high frequency and exhibits large transport speeds. If we go over the history of the resonant turning diode, the concepts of the resonant turning was put forward in 1951 and then in early 1970s. The, reson the resonant turning diode simulation has been predicted. In, uh, in the early 1980s, many high performance results are obtained due to the advances in MBE and device fabrications. However, in the future, we need to think more about the silicon CMOS compatibility, so we may switch to other material systems, such as some silicon compatible systems. So that is all of my, pro, uh, my talk today about the resonant tuning diode, history, and future. Thank you all for listening to my talk.